Hello everyone, welcome to my first tutorial. This one's going to be on a um, gang beast style movement, so pretty body based and physics based and all that kind of fun stuff. It will require a lot of you kind of experimenting and having fun and that kind of thing, but that's all part of the game tracing process anyway, so it's all good. Um, as we can see, um, we have my model here. Um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit in detail, not not too much, but um, but there's just some things you need to know about this. But I'm going to try and go for, get through this as fast as possible because you don't want someone who's just going to go drag on and on and on about something they really know about. So anyway, um, I've got this rig guy rigged up. If I were you, I would, you know, if we go into edit mode, name each individual part, if we go into here, then we've got left arm and spine. Uh, uh, of course, this would be your left arm because if you're facing his direction, that's left. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. So yeah, um, we've got this guy here, he's just kind of a... I don't really know what he is. Um, the thing I want to talk to you about, however, is oh god, this is really making my computer go a bit odd. Um, however, when I first tried this, I made a character like this. Now, this guy looks pretty cool, doesn't he? Um, especially if we turn off. Um, sorry about this. Yeah. Now that's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, yeah, it, it looks cool. But this wouldn't work at all, and I want to tell you why. Unity is. Um, Rigid, not rigid, but <laughs> ragdoll system um, and its physics system is actually quite advanced. Um, as you can see, this guy has no arms, and you may be thinking, oh, well, you know, it doesn't really matter. But imagine if humans didn't have arms, what, except for picking up things, what are arms used for? It's for balance, and this guy could not balance, or at least be spinning around with a lot of stuff. With this guy, however, it worked just fine. Um, so you definitely want to create a character that's going to balance. Um, sorry about that. Oop, God. Yeah, you definitely want to create a character that's, that's going to be able to balance and um, otherwise, yeah. So, um, so with while creating a character just going a bit odd, then try and experiment with some like um, obviously pretty body values and that kind of thing. But if it still occurs. Like I was, I was experimenting with this guy for about 12 hours before I realised maybe it's try something else. So I tried something else and it worked. So here we have our guy here. Um, sorry about a jump cut. I just wasn't sure if it was recording, but I guess it was. Anyway, here we have our guy here. Um, this is what you'll be making. Although, um, yeah. So I'll just quick, quick, quick play. It's nothing too advanced. As you can see, he moves forwards. He moves backwards, he moves left, he moves right. Now you can do much, much more on this. This is the very, very basic stuff. Now I'll talk to you through talk to you a bit a bit through of how you can do more advanced stuff, but um but here we go, this completely rigid body control, no and no animations here. Um as I said you can do much more. And my my rigging job was pretty bad, but um it works. It works at the end of the day. So I've already set this up for you. Um I'll take you through a bit of stuff. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to import your character in, make sure it's got generate colliders. Um, if you want him to look how he originally looked, you go on to normals, calculate, apply, and as you, can, as you can see, it applies that same effect. Let's, let's see how he looks without the, that weird effect. I think it looks a bit better like that actually. Might keep it like that. Hmm. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, so yeah, you, you want to import your character in. If I were you, if you want to import it with rig, when you go into Blender, all we need, need to do is send your, save your Blender file on your desktop, just drag the Blender file in. It works. So, why not? Um, so, yeah, that's, um, and that's how you do that. So, once you've got him in, I'm just going to move this for a second. Um, you want to drag your little guy in. It looks a bit odd. Let's, let's apply some red to him so we can easily tell him out from the background. That's all nice. Um, and then, what you want to do is you want to go on to create other Ragdoll. And then, on it, oop, um, just apply each of the ragdoll parts to where we think they'll go. It says just here where they'll go. Um, if I were you, before making and rigging a character, especially rigging it, I would look at these um, at these parts and see exactly what you need. Because if you have too many parts or too little parts, then you know, that's always a problem. If you have too little parts, it can be fixed. Um, I'm just going to quick show you. So let's let's say for example, um, it needs a left knee, no left hips, left knee and left foot. Now I haven't created a left a left hip and a left knee. So what I'm going to do? What well, I don't understand how to do this. I have obviously created a foot. Then you go into game object, empty child, and name it left foot. And you don't actually need to put anything on it, and it'll work just fine. Um, so 
his bones are just, I think, I believe in Unity at least, bones are just kind of positioned, so it's not really, and, and then it kind of adds things like rigid bodies on, um, collided on, that kind of thing, and it worked just fine, so yeah, no problems there. So so once you created your ragdoll, it'll end up what as this one is, but you won't be able to control it. So there's a few things you want to do. First of all, definitely, definitely play around with it. Um, your f the feet might not actually have colliders on. I'd colliders on if I were you, because otherwise they will just sink. It won't sink through the floor, but it will go to about there-ish, about the hip, and then it will stop sinking through, or, or at least the top of the kind of leg, and then, it'll, and then obviously that looks a bit odd. So, so um, add colliders to the bottom of it. Don't make them too big, otherwise they spaz out. Um, yeah, d just kind of play around with it because otherwise it might just make them very basic rigid bodies. Sorry for this wasting time, um, but I'm sure we can skip ahead if you need to. If we go into Ragdoll, I'm just going to show you what my default one looked like before I made it any better. Root, left hip, left knee. So yeah, this um, I was trying to talk you through some of the stuff I'm doing. Is this is massively about experimentation and kind of making it right for yours because every model is going to be different. Every model is going to have its own um, characteristics about it and stuff, and you're going to want it to be a little bit different. Um, they make it exactly like gang beasts um, for two reasons. First of all, you want to be original. You know, you, you want to come up with your own for something. And, and secondly, they were nice enough to, to tell me um, how they basically did it. They they, they, they told me that, that they got the um, armature and just added um, forces to various parts so you, you don't just directly copy them you know um, then again though I think it would be pretty hard to directly copy them because there's, there's how much tweaking involved so you got this then you want to create so you're like oh perfect well I think that looks, uh, that looks fine why not why not let's test it yeah it looks a little b it's not perfect I'm sure you would agree and the, um, the falling over and stuff that's something that you know doesn't really matter. Anyway, let me take you through what makes up this little guy. Eh? Um, I'm just going to add him as a prefab just in case I accidentally delete him or something. So the first thing is you'll notice he stands up. How do we do this? Very simple. You want to go to the head. I applied the head anyway. Add a constant force and play around with the y value. It needs to be pretty high. Um, I'll just quick show you, so I'm going to copy 188 so I don't lose that. If I set that to 10, and let's just see what happens. As you can see, there's a little bit of resistance, but um, not very much. If I set this to 500, so that's a very high number, he's going to go flying up. I mean, we don't want that, unless you do want that, in which case, you know, there you go. But uh, 188. Oh, I should probably mention my weight. I didn't have to go like each individual one, 188, no, 185, 186, 187, 188. I just kind of guessed that number and it worked, so why not? Um, applying to the head means you get a very wobbly head, which I like personally. Um, you could also apply to things like the spine, but um, well, I, I guess we can see what happens when we apply it to spine. Um, so, oh, if you wonder why I have a sphere collider, by the way. It's because I added to the f to each of the feet the um, colliders. So yeah, that's um, that's that. But anyway, it's fine. We want to go into constant force. Let's add a 188 again um, on the head. Set it to zero. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's not great. Um, that's why I do it to the head usually because it. Um, it's the highest up, so it, it's, it's not going to pull anything else up. It's just going to pull. It's going to pull it, like grabbing it by the head and pulling it up. Oh, starting to waste time now. Um, I've only got five minutes left on my recording, so sorry about this. I've been a bit slow. Um, so anyway, let's let's carry on. So I've set the root to disable rotation on um, on the y-axis. Now, by doing it by script and by doing it by forces, you can rotate it. It, it just means by default it's not going to rotate, or at least I believe it's that way. Otherwise, you might want to find another way to lock it to the y-axis. I'm not entirely sure yet, but um, as you can see, it's, it's not just rotating of its own free will. If I set that off, let's see what happens. It's as, as you can see when it jumps, it kind of turns it a little bit around, which um, 
it's kind of cool. It, it could work on the game quite well, actually. I might, <laughs> might keep that on for my actual game. But, um, it's, that's, that's kind of a nice hardware animation, actually. But then again, it's, it's kind of moving around as well. But yeah, um, depends if you want that. Of course, it does mess up things like that. Actually, does it mess up? No, it doesn't mess up. Does this mess up direction? I don't believe this mess up direction, no. Oh, gone. You almost fell off then. Uh, but I'm going to keep that on for now. Um, so is there anything else I added? Oh yeah, yeah. So now to the root, I've added my move script. Uh, I'm going to show you this in a sec. And, in fact, in fact I don't know why it's in a sec, so I'm going to show you it now. Here is my move script. You probably want to copy this down, but I'm going to take you through it anyway. So it's, it's a very simple, very simple thing. Uh, move bone is the bone that's going to be moved um, when you press these buttons. So W, pressing W will move it forwards, and that's not in rotation to where the model's facing, but to, but to um, I guess you can count it as north, south, even east and west. So it's it didn't change based on where your model's facing. That's a global thing, that it, it'll always be forwards if for, for every model and that kind of thing. So anyway, um, if, if W is pressed, then um, it'll move forwards times 500. Um, you want to go for a high force. Obviously, if we go for two highs, let's go with um, 10,000. Let's see what happens now. Not really good, I can bet you that. So, moving backwards, fine. Moving forward, it throws it, which we don't really want. Um, just want to quickly see this. Sorry about this. Just want to quickly see. So then, um, yeah, it will it it stay on the same kind of line. Um, sorry about that, I just wanted to see what's happened. Um, so yeah, if we carry on. Um, so we want to set that back to 500, but if we set that to 5, so it's going to be really low. Backwards, yeah, it's nice. Forwards, it's not even noticeable. It's, it's adding force, but it's just too little to even lift it, so... Where did it go? <laughs> sorry about that little jump cut there, had a bit of a problem. Oh no, the thing's flashing, which is going to really upset me. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, it looked very odd then. So let's set this back to 500. 500 is a good value. Um, S move, means moving back. You know, all, all this just default stuff, and the space moves, moves, means moving up. You know, it's, it's self explanatory. So move bone, this would be new, normally a rigid body, but we, but we set that as a variable so we can determine which bone we want to move very easily. Um, Forwards, backwards, yeah, all that kind of thing. So we just add that to the root bone. Don't add that to the um, ragdoll because if we click on that, um, as we can, s oh, I'll just quickly make him go backwards. As we can see, I haven't found that way yet to make that move with him, so it won't do anything really. Let him go flying down there. Anyway, let's wrap this tutorial up now. So um, you've seen this. You're about to copy that down. Um, so let's just say, for example, you want them to rotate. Well, I'm sure there's a. Um, what I'd probably suggest is to add a variable to here. Um, two variables: one for the left um, shoulder, and one for the right shoulder. And you want to just add um, a force of forwards, or just add force altogether. Um, I'm not entirely sure how. I'm going to work that out later. <laughs> um, to the f to the right bone, if you want it to go right, and left when you want it to go left. So it's a much more kind of real. Um, turning animation, you're not literally turning the whole body, you're pushing a part of it to one side, which means it's turning it kind of thing. As kind of, um, how, to, how do I explain this? I'm, I'm sure you know what I mean, I'm sure you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, um, if, if you want them to jump, then I'll, I'll cover jump. The issue with jump at the moment is due to the gravity of our spam space, he's not going to stop. And he's gonna well, he will come down eventually, but he's got enough force to carry on forever. Anyway, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna wrap up. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll probably be doing more tutorials in the future, but it's kind of obscure things. I'll be doing things like hunger systems, maybe. Just whenever I've got the spare time. Also, if you want to go see some other um, really cool Unity tutorial tutorials, I'd recommend ch checking out Quill18 Creates. He does amazing stuff. I've learned half what to know of him, and he's just fantastic. I think he also does Blender stuff as well. I can't remember. But, but yeah, he, he's really good, really kind of that kind of thing. Anyway, um, I've got 10 seconds left, I believe. So thank you all for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks.